Hey guys, Miss Marissa here, and today I'm going to be going over metric system conversions. Now, there is something really important that we have to do for metric system conversions in order to be able to do them using dimensional analysis, and that is that we have to make sure that we go and memorize these scientific notation equivalents for the metric system. So you notice here it talks about like for kilo, that one kilo is one times 10 to the third of whatever unit you're dealing with, whether it's grams or joules or meters or whatever the case may be. Um, for centi, one centi is equal to one times 10 to the negative two meters, joules, whatever. For milli, it's one times 10 to the negative third. For micro, it's 1 times 10 to the negative 6. And for nano, it's 1 times 10 to the negative 9. Now, keep in mind that you notice, first off, all of these start off with that 1 times 10 part. And the only thing that's different are those little exponent numbers. So what I see a lot of people do is they'll make themselves some flashcards with one side having kilo and the other side having the 3. Or for nano, they'll have nano on one side and then 1 times 10 to the negative 9th on the other side. So that way they can start to get familiar with them. Now, as you're using the scientific notation equivalents and a conversion, one will always go with the prefix. And the scientific notation equivalent will always go with our base unit. Now, your base unit could be a multitude of things like I've already mentioned. It could be liters, grams, uh, joules, whatever the case may be. But these enable us to make those conversions. Now, there's other ways to state these conversions. These just happen to be the way that we're going to show you in class. So keep in mind that, you know, you could have a thousand meters equals a kilometer, which a lot of you know that conversion. Or you could state that using the scientific notation equivalence of one times 10 to the third meters equals one kilometer. They say the same thing, so don't freak out about that. The same thing goes for the little guys, you know, for the centi, for example, 100 centimeters is in a meter. A lot of you know that conversion. Well, another way of reporting that conversion is that one centimeter equals 0.01 meters. And if you take that 0.01 meters and convert that into scientific notation, you end up with one centimeter equals one times 10 to the negative two meters. So you can see, there's where our scientific notation equivalent is coming into play. All three of these conversions say the same thing. And I'll be honest, I don't care which conversion you use, whatever format, as long as you're getting the conversion correct. So again, I'm going to be doing my examples using these conversions up here. So kind of keep that in mind. So let's go ahead and try one of these out. I'm going to kind of scroll this down here. And it says, let's practice. And it starts off with a metric system uh, mentioning something about prefix to base and vice versa. And what we mean by prefix is that our measurement includes like a kilo or a centi or a nano in front of it. The base unit would just be the base itself, the joules, the liters, the meters, or whatever. So what I always do when I do one of these calculations is I determine, am I dealing with uh, two prefixes? Am I dealing with a prefix and a base? What am I trying to convert between? And the reason why I do that is because it helps us know how many steps to use. Like for example here, if I'm going from prefix to base, that is only going to take one step in my conversion. So let's look and see how I would conquer that conversion. It says current computer transistor gate oxides, who even knows what that is, are approaching 32 nanometers. How many meters is this? So like we did before, I'm going to go find a start number, which in this case is the only number I have. And I want to find a how much a how, or a how many of what I'm trying to get into. How many meters? Okay, so let's start by writing this just like we did before. I'm going to put how many meters is equal to 32 nanometers. Okay, now the first thing I'm going to do after I've done that is I'm going to figure out am I dealing with prefixes or bases or what. So here with meters, I don't see a prefix in front of that, so that is dealing with a, what we call a metric base unit. Now, the other value here, the 32 nanometers, that has nano in front of the meters, meaning I'm dealing with something that has a prefix attached. And once I see I'm dealing between a base and a prefix, that's a key to me that I'm only going to have one step in my calculation versus a multitude of them. All right, so now I'm ready to kind of set up my conversions here. And I know this is only going to take one step, so what that means is I know my one step is going to get me between nanometers 
and meters. Okay, so we know we're going to do that. Here's where I'm going to use the metric conversions from up above. Okay, so here's where I'm going to do that saying that I put in the gray box. One always goes with the prefix in my conversions. Okay, when I'm doing a metric conversion, one always goes with the prefix. Okay, so, well, which of these two things is the prefix? Well, I know nanometers is a prefix, so that's where my one goes. Ta-da! Now, that nano is still important because that nano is going to determine what goes up here with meters. I know that nano's scientific notation equivalent is 1 times 10, and according to my chart, negative 9. Okay, so the way I knew that negative 9 is by looking at the fact that I was dealing with meters. Okay, so now that I've got this, I can see that nanometers and nanometers cancels out, hooray, leaving me in meters, and look at there, that's the unit I was trying to get into. So now I'm ready to plug this sucker into my handy dandy calculator. So I'm going to bust that out here. Okay, I'm going to turn it on, clear it out, and I'm going to plug in it in exactly how it looks, 32 open parentheses, one second e negative nine, and if you want to put divided by one, you can. And you, we can see it gave us some a really, really long decimal number. Now, when we see we get a really, really long decimal number like this, what I usually do is I'll change it over into scientific notation because that makes it a lot easier to write. So I'm going to hit second psi and then move over to underline my psi, hit enter. And there's my answer in scientific notation. Now let's decide about significant digits for just a second. I can see my original number had two significant figures or significant digits in it. And so that means I want to show two in my answer. And luckily for us, that's how it came out in my calculator as 3.2 times 10 to the negative eighth. Now, don't forget, we want to put a unit with this. And in this case, we solve this into meters. Okay, so there we go, we've done one, hooray. Let's do another one. The next one says, how many microliters are there in 4.56 times 10 to the negative third liters? So again, I'm gonna start off by figuring out my start number and what I'm trying to get into. Here my start number is this 4.56 times 10 to the negative three liters. And I'm trying to get this into how many microliters? Okay, so when I write microliters, the micro symbol is kind of weird. I always joke it's like a lowercase u, but in front of that lowercase u, you're going to put a funky kind of curved tail with it. So it's kind of a weird, almost a u-shaped m with a tail. It's bizarre almost. And so then I'm going to put how many micro, oh, liters, my bad, micro liters, are there in 4.56 times 10 to the negative third liters. Okay, so now let's figure out how many steps we want to show here. Well, microliters has a prefix in front of it. Okay, whereas over here on this guy, we have just liters. There's no prefix in front of it, so this is a base. So again, I'm working between prefix and base. So again, I'm only going to need one step in my conversion. So I'm going to write down that one step here. And just like we've done before, since liters is on the top of this next step here, I want to put liters on the bottom of my new step, okay? And so I know this is one step, so again, I'm going to have microliters in the top because, well, I've got to end in whatever unit I'm trying to get into, right, with this one step. All right, so again, we got to go with our rule. You're going to hear me say this a lot. One always goes with the prefix. Our prefix here is micro, so that's where it goes. But then I look at the micro to decide what goes with liters. So the micro is still important. I know micro's equivalent is one times 10 to the negative six. So that's what's gonna go down here. Ta-da! Okay, so now we've gotten liters and liters to cancel out. And I got it into microliters, and so now I'm ready to plug this into my calculator. So again, here's my calculator. I'm going to clear it out. Okay, so I'm going to plug in my number exactly how it looks. 4.56 second E negative 3. Okay, then I'm going to open a parentheses and put 1 divided by 1 second E negative 6. Close it. 
and I can see I want to show three sig figs and lucky for me that's what pops up here in my calculator so you can plug in or put it down as your answer the 4.56 times 10 to the third or if you wanted to report this back in standard notation you could put four five six zero that would work too that also has three sig figs as long as you don't put a decimal point with it and to finish this up we need to put a unit of microliters on it and ta-da we did it we made a one-step basic metric conversion so in the next video i'm going to show you how we can do our two-step problems if we're trying to go prefix to prefix all right see you then